deserve respect. Like the man's gonna protect yourself all the time. So I love and love the best. All right, the first of two world title fights for Basie Ramirez taking on Satoshi Shimizu. The first world title defense of his featherweight belt won in his last fight against Isaac Dogbe, the first title shot in the career of Satoshi Shimizu. Both fighters southpaw. Ramirez with the blue trunks with black trim, Shimizu with the white trunks. We talked about Shimizu being the taller fighter with the obvious longer reach. Um, but what we're going to look for right now is if he if he knows how to use that height and reach. Um, if he doesn't have a stiff jab, if he doesn't know how to keep Robisi on the outside, then Robisi, Robisi's coming with hard shots. Shimizu looking to establish the jab. Shoots a 1-2 on the southpaw stance. Jabs it quickly. Brings the guard up high. Ramirez, two-time Olympic gold medalist for Cuba. Shimizu, also a two-time Olympian, winning the bronze medal in 2012. And Shimizu, sorry, Shimizu's hands are just a little bit low for me right now. You know, he can, that jab isn't stiff enough. It's not straight enough. And, uh... Robisi can very easily come over the top of these punches when he chooses to. Shimizu is ranked at number 12 by the WBO. Good combination from Robisi. You can see the power difference already. It's always interesting to me when a guy at number 12 gets a shot at a world title. I wonder what's going on with the 11 of the 10 guys ahead of him, but nonetheless. Oh. <laughs> this fight part is here in Japan. Same question. Yep. This is boxing, right? Robisi misses with the left hand there as Shimizu ducks under that shot and fires back at the right hand jab. Robesi excited for his first world title defense. Said he wants to put on a show for the fans there in Japan. One, two, and then a right hand to the body for Ramirez. Uppercut, right hand for Ramirez. I think Ramirez is sort of trying to feel out Shimizu right now, trying to see what, he, what he's got in his arsenal. Testing him out on the inside, testing him out from a distance. You can see Ramirez has that, that high guard, sort of looking through, looking for his openings. I think he's, he knows that Shimizu isn't strong enough to hurt him. This scheduled 12-rounder, Christina Poncher and Michaela Mayer here with you on the broadcast. We'd like to welcome all of our friends watching on Sky Sports in the UK and Ireland. We appreciate you spending your morning and into the afternoon with us. It's an early one for us here. 3.45 a.m. from Michaela and I here in Las Vegas calling this fight remotely from the studio. But pleasure to have you with us. And quite frankly... I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the main event. If there was any fight that could get me excited at four in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, in the way. Not many. Steven Fulton is one of them. As big combinations from Ramirez. Ramirez turns it on here in round two. You know, Ramirez is, is letting his combinations go, and Shimizu is sort of just covering up and hiding in that shell, which is a really dangerous position to be when you're taking punches from someone as strong as Robisi. And you can see Shimizu on the inside trying to throw those shots, but it's really, Ramirez is really unfazed by it. A lot of them hitting off the gloves and the arms of Ramirez as well. Almost like he's, he's, he's letting him kind of get some of his shots off, but then as soon as he sees an opening for a counter, you know, Ravesi is not one to waste punches. He is really uh, efficient when he decides to throw. Economical with his shots. And that's good, you know, coming from the amateur background where 
you just sort of had to throw, throw, throw. You know, you three minute rounds, three three minute rounds, and that's another skill that it takes that when you cross over into the pros to sort of settle down and start to see your shots and pick your pick your shots, set things up, a little bit more strategy involved. So you can see him taking his time right now and, and doing that. Shamizi really not putting any steam, Michaela, behind any of these shots. They're very lazy shots, and it's, I'm just waiting for Ramirez to, to slip and come over to the top and counter one of these shots because, like I said, Shamizi's hands are just a little bit too low for me. Low and slow. Low and slow. That's good when you're, you know, cooking a pot roast, if, you, <laughs> if you're smoking some meat, but not if you're in a boxing ring against your basie Ramirez. Counter shot with the right hand from Robesi. Ramirez down to the body with the left hand. Shimizu just calling with that lead right hand jab from the southpaw stance. Robesi just misses with that wide left hand. Good hooks from BC, just trying to close that space. This is 14th professional fight, seven KOs. The defending WBO featherweight world champion, and you know, over all my years of covering boxing, you know, every fighter's dream to, to win a world title, and winning the world title is a huge accomplishment for any pro fighter. But then they talk about the target that's on your back once it comes time to defend, and the shift in mentality, and the shift that happens when you come from being the hunter to the hunted. What's it like, Michaela, it, from your experience, not only just winning the fight, winning the title, but now defending it and going to your opponent's backyard to do so? I mean, personally for me, winning one world title wasn't, wasn't even that satisfying. Like, to me, that was like a small step in the ultimate goal, which was to unify the division. And in this four belt area, that era, this is what everybody wants to do. They want to go undisputed. They want to challenge the other champions. And I love that about this era. But to me, one world title, this definitely had an effect about me being a female in the sport. When, you know, at the time when we're still trying to make a place for ourselves. But uh, one world title didn't change my life. Two world titles didn't change my life. Um, so it really, it really taking some time to, to, to build that up, but but defending versus winning, it's like you you have to change that mentality and that mindset that everyone's coming for you. You gotta you gotta hold on to that shot and you're to take something from it. Yeah, no, exactly. But that's sort of the exciting part of it also. You know, it, it, it's either gonna fuel you or it's gonna make you sort of shut down. I think a true champion it, that, that excites them, people are coming for them, and um, you know, you're the one that everybody wants to fight. That's what you work for. He is at the wrong spot. Left hooks now coming from the hip of Robesi Ramirez connecting on Shimizu. Yeah, I'd really like to see Ramirez mix it with some body shots in there. Not just one shot, but combinations. Mix you know, he's so tall, he's right there at the body. You gotta take what, take what you can get. Dig to the body and then come over the top to the head. More pitter patter shots there from Shimizu as hooks continue to get around the long arms of the Japanese fighter. Ramirez needs to be letting his hands go in here, not just holding his, his hands up and, and keeping that shell. Nice uppercuts from Ramirez. Again, a warning for a low blow for Shimizu. A couple of shots have hit the hips of Ramirez. I think that the reason why he's, Ramirez is just holding his hands up like that, keeping, you know, keeping the earmuffs, what you know, Coach Al would call it, is because he doesn't feel the power from Shimizu. He knows that he can't really hurt him in that position, but still, he's got to shift his head, punch off that, and not just sit there and take shots. Take a look at the comfy box numbers through the first three rounds. Robesi Ramirez has landed nearly 40% of his punches compared to just 12% from Shimizu. 55% of his power shots have connected. Oh, nice uppercut there. Robesi 
starting to get in more of a rhythm here in round four. Like I said, he's going to be economical with the shots. He's going to be efficient. I mean, that's backed up by the compu box numbers. Just stated, anytime you're landing at a 40% clip, that's, that's highly efficient. Three jabs, left hand, followed by right hook. Yeah, at this Back point, jab. I think Ramirez knows exactly what Shimizu is going to throw. I mean, I do. So I'm sure he's picked up on it. There's nothing fancy. He's not mixing up his, his punches too much. It's not that's on the inside, but mostly from the outside. It's just that jab and that one, too. That hook is starting to back Shimizu up. Oh, beautiful punch selection there from Ramirez. Shimizu looking to get back to the jab, looking to hook around with his right hand. Punch scores doesn't affect Robesi much, but when he does get around the guard, I mean, that's a scoring shot, even if it doesn't look as good as the shot that Robesi's throwing. Well, you see, you see Ramirez had, uh, had Shimizu, and then he had a good, a good three-punch combination, and then he sort of backs up like this and lets Shimizu take control of the ring when he doesn't need to do that. He closes that, that space and then gives it up. So all the work he did to close that space and get inside and land those shots, now, now he's having to do it all over again. Now Robesi's coming forward. Chimizu retreats with that high guard back against the ropes. Robesi Ramirez turning it on here in round four. And that's exactly what he needs to do. He's a better fighter, he's a stronger fighter. There's no reason he should be inching back and letting Chimizu take over, take the space and close that space on him. under 30 seconds to go in round four. And I don't like the earmuffs. I want to see, you know, Ramirez has a really good jab. I'd like to see him continue to hold that space and pump that jab and let the combinations go. I don't like the earmuffs just holding and block the punches. There was the right hand jab. So maybe he's a little thrown off by that, you know, I don't know, maybe it's, a, it's part of the game plan that um, him and his coach have come up with, but I'm personally not a fan of the, of the high guard. And there he up jabs with the right hand. Shimizu still finding a hard time getting an opening through that guard. Yeah, he sh uh, Shimizu should be going down to the body with a high guard like that. That's one way to bring the hands down now, isn't it? We're trying to find, you know, openings like, by pulling the gloves in certain directions. And here, here goes Ramirez with the Oh, and the an uppercut there drops Shimizu. That's the kind of combinations I want to see from Ramirez. I know that he has that in him. Maybe it was in his plan all along. Maybe blood streaming from the nose of Shimizu now as Robesi Ramirez continues to pour it on here in round five. Left hand right here, and it's over. He has defended his world title successfully for the first time, and still, Robesi Ramirez, WBO featherweight world champion. He was in there until he wasn't, Michaela May. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I was hoping that Ramirez would, would do, because I know that's what he has in him. Took him a second. I mean, not that long. It was the fourth round. Okay, but round, yeah. Fifth round. Hands raised to the crowd, showing once again that the power at 126 is real for Robesi Ramirez. That is the now fourth knockout in his last five fights. This one coming in his first world title defense. In a fight where his opponent only Shout landed 23 22 Salamat sa through four. I'll say four rounds since it didn't get through the fifth, but that's that's impressive to keep your opponent only at a 12% clip. Meanwhile, you landed 100 punches to his 22. Yeah, and... If he would have let his hands go like he just did, just imagine that would have been over. That would have been over the first round.
Well, I'm looking at the numbers once again of those 100 total punches landed, 86 of those were power shots. 59% clip. So he goes to Japan, he gets the job done, and there's no doubt in my mind he's going to be looking to unify those world titles next. Here's Jamie Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, eight seconds. In round number five, a referee in charge, Ramon Peña, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still... The WBO featherweight champion of the world, El Rey, Robesi Ramirez. Robesi Ramirez now 13 and 1 as a pro with eight knockouts coming along in his professional career just fine at win number 14 under the tutelage of Ismael Salas. Commission there, but by Team Ramirez. And here's a look at how he got it done. Uppercut, then there comes with a hook another uppercut and that uppercut really started yeah um, the combination and it hurt shimizu ramirez saw it Ooh, finish with the, one finish with that final uppercut to set him on his knees blood just pouring from the nose at that point you can see him really throwing his whole body into those shots i mean just throwing everything and that that's the power i was talking about when when he first uh started making that transition and working on the strength training. He got in the ring and you could hear those thuds. That's exactly what I was talking about.